Mr. Tim Rethlake, friend of years, friend of tears. We're excited to have you as part of our OSR Academy. How are you? Bradley, I am excellent today, and I am equally excited to be part of your academy. Looking forward to it. Very good. Well, you joined us at uh, Sales Fundamentals Workshop. You were a coach there. You are a coach at your own organization. Traction cannot spell traction without TR. Tim Rathlake, for you folks not following along here. So we're going to have you join the OSR Academy for a very specific reason. With your experience in sales and sales management and leadership all over the country, you have helped me in numerous ways on different topics, think through different things as we teach it, but also in my own business. And we identified this, this content that we're covering here, which is really about transitioning from in terms one and two, which is more internal, our own why, our own messaging, our own company. Now we are, we're getting in front of the customer or the prospect. And we really want to think about our clarity of message and how we prepare for meetings and the different things that are part of that. So we introduced a couple different frameworks, the bluff framework, bottom line up front, as well as X is true because of A, B, and C. So we're the best in the nation because of these three reasons that are relevant to you. Wanted to have you here to really help kind of expand the aperture of the different elements that are part of this clear communication. And uh, you're going to be with us for kind of 45 to 60 minutes in kind of an interactive way. Maybe give the audience here just a little context about where your mind goes immediately and your experience coaching folks to really come in prepared and ready to deliver value. Yeah. Um, it, it, over the course of 40 some years, Bradley, I spent the first 20 or so of that in a frontline sales role. And I spent the last 20 coaching and more the ride along observer of sales. And the one thing that I've seen both new salespeople as well as experienced salespeople do is walk into a meeting not fully prepared. And, and you can kind of see how that happens because preparing and getting your, your act together before you walk into an important meeting is important, but it's not urgent. And so when your day starts getting away, you've maybe carved out some time in your calendar to prep for that meeting later today. And then something goes sideways with a bid or the boss calls with a, a 911 that you've got to go respond to. And now you're sitting in the parking lot 90 seconds away from walking in or walking onto a job site and you're still trying to Google this builder and figure out something about it. And so you can sound quasi intelligent. So um, you, you've heard me in the past use a term slow is fast. And, and so taking a hot second. And I think the, the, the key question before we go into any meeting, and we'll certainly go into more detail uh, on this when I'm with you, but there's really two whys that you have to answer before you go into any meeting with uh, with a builder or a principal or a designer, or architect, wh whatever the situation is, even if you're going into a meeting with your boss. Right. Mm -hmm. And the first why is is yours. What what why are you going in there? What's your intent? If we walk out of there 30 minutes later, is your why solid enough and tangible enough that we can check the box? Yes, we accomplished that or no, we didn't. Because if you don't know why the hell you're going in there, then you're just going to kind of fumble and, and any path is going to lead you to nowhere, which is exactly what you're shooting at. Yeah. The, the second why that's super important is that other person on the other side of the tailgate you're talking to or on the other side of that desk or... Uh, why should they give you 30 to 45 minutes of their time, uh, their, their only thing in their life, they're never going to get back, they cannot make more time, why should they give you their time? And if you walk out and I walk right back in and ask them, hey, would you pay for that half hour you just spent with that sales rep? Was there enough value that you could say, yeah, I'd give them 100 bucks for that? That's a that's a really high bar, Bradley, you know, and, and I'm not sure it's attainable, but it's certainly something we should aim at, because if you if you go in with that intent of what is what is he or she really get value? What what value do I bring them? Um, that that's where all good meetings really start with are those those two solid whys. 
Um, I think it's also important to understand that you're going to end up talking in the builder's organization, the person that you sound the most like. So my, my work history is in the hearth in industry. So fireplaces, right? So I'll use a fireplace term here. If you want to talk uh, framing dimensions and clearances and rise to run ratios of venting job site stuff, technical stuff, that's great if you want to talk to a project manager. But if you need to be in talking to the director of their design center, or you want to talk to their sales and marketing leader, you need to be able to speak salesies and marketees. You need to be able to speak in their language and be conscious of who, what their role is and what's important to them. If, if you're talking to the owner of a custom builder or you're talking to the division president of a production builder, the higher up you go, they are concerned with two things. How can you positively impact my people and how can you positively impact my cash? Mm -hmm. And so you need to be able as a sales rep to adjust your speed to some degree and, and think about and, and what, what can also happen sometimes is you may have multiple people in a meeting. You, you may be with an operations lead and you may have their sales lead in there and maybe their selections manager is in there. You need to have a little something in that meeting planted for benefit to all of them. And, and you can't do that if you don't think about this first and, and sort of pre-plan before you get in there. So those are those are some of the things that we'll be kind of covering a, a lot more in depth because we'll have a lot more time together. But I'm certainly looking forward to, to going deeper on on this preparation because it is so critically important to a good outcome. Yeah, uh, that's there's so much good stuff in here. And that's that's why we're bringing you here. And two things kind of jump out of me. Maybe I'll throw these back to you and you can kind of put a bow on those. The one is I think we're both fans of kind of the Miller Hyman school of selling and one thing i remember reading that book and it's kind of an insight to the obvious but sometimes it gets kind of muddled over is this idea of a sso what's the single sales objective what's that next little you know micro commitment or what's the thing that we're going to allow them to opt into for that single sales objective what are we trying to do and uh the other part is we for many folks here in term two it's the only term where we have them read a full book from front to back, a couple hundred pages. And it was The Art of Profitability by Adrian Slywatsky. They kind of introduced 23 different profit models. Many of them do not apply to our business, but a lot of them do. And I think what we're trying to do, and you spoke to is, if you get a guy and who's the president or he's their CFO or someone who's responsible for making sure we make money here, we want to bring some of those there, but you know, quite frankly, some of those, they need a little research. I gotta, gotta bring back like, what did I learn? How is this relevant? What are we trying to do? So maybe anything there on just talking terms of profitability and that single sales objective to kind of put a bow on this little teaser that we're doing here. Yeah, I, I, I think, and, and you know, we always talk a lot about back of the napkin math, right? You, you don't you don't need to, to have a, a degree in finance to be able to walk a job site and then go, wow, this, this is incredibly, this, this particular design is incredibly inefficient and there is zero value to the home buyer, which yeah. ultimately that, that home buyer, when you say what's value is, what is the customer willing to pay for, mm -hmm. right? And there are so many inefficiencies in home building, which is why you see a big dumpster in front of a lot of job sites still. Um, and if you could walk, you know, before you get in, We'll talk and when we go a little deeper dive about the, the worst meeting you can have is the one you get that you're not ready for. And the best way to not be ready for a meeting is to not know what, what you easily could find out on your own, to not know that before you get into that meeting. So if you walk two, three job sites for this builder, and if you're, you know, if you're, if you're providing the lumber for, for that particular builder and you see that there are some framing designs where they could really take some cost out that really would not be seen to the home uh, owner, the home buyer, mm -hmm. multiply that by the number of homes. Now you have at least an educated start because what, what we see happen sometimes is, um, you know, you, you've 
prepared for the meeting. You're all set. The builders that gave the, the, that you text the day ahead of time and he says, yeah, I'm still good. You get there and maybe you're meeting him on a job site and he's tied up with another contractor or he's tied up in something. He's on his phone. He looks at you. He keeps giving you this, you know, I see it. And then you're 30, you're 22 minutes into your 30 minute appointment window. And he comes over and says, sorry, it's hitting the fan today. I got five minutes. What you got? Mm -hmm. Right. And you got two choices right at that point. You can say, hey, you know, I appreciate your day. It's hard. Let's find some time to give this the time it deserves. Or you can have a fallback position in your hip pocket that says, if that happens, what's that single pain point that I found walking those few jobs, right? Slow is fast. I spend a little bit of time. Can I put enough of a interesting point in that, in the five minutes I have that he would go, hmm, all right. This is, this guy's a little cut above the average here. I'll give him some more time when he, he'll, he'll, maybe he'll extend that time then, or you can say, look, let's pop our calendars open. What do you got tomorrow or the next day? And let's, let's revisit this. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and that happens all the time, right? That happens where you can shrink or guys, even that like, Hey, totally forgot you're here. I don't, I don't have time for this. I thought it was tomorrow, right? So how can we kind of plan for that? But again, these are predictable in the sense that we know they're going to happen. Mm -hmm. They're somewhat unpredictable is that we don't know when. However, we can't be like, oh, all right. You should be like, got it in my little toolbox. I've got this customer blew me off, but I'm here in person. Here's what I do. So anyway, dude, uh, even just here talking these things with you, there are things that apply to my business and the way that I sell and the things that we do. So super excited to have you uh, in front of our students. I guess um, the ask for students here, when you guys are there, come ready to ask questions. Tim's got, he's going to give you some guidance and some details and establish a couple, uh, you know, situations for you. He's also going to call in people. So for better or worse, he's going to be more similar to Hartman than dissimilar in that. We're going to see your little name there in the little Zoom box. I'm going to call on you. So we want this to be interactive and engaging. And I know Tim thrives in that environment. So uh, that's all we got. Any parting words, Tim? Uh, Jets, I'm certainly looking forward to the group. You've said that about how smart they are. And so I'm looking forward to finding that out. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, man.